There you go. All right, so this is an inclined plane problem, and it's a will it move inclined plane problem. On a test, it may not say that it's a will it move problem. It might just give you mu sub k, mu sub s, and say find the acceleration. So how do you know if you have to prove if it moves or not? If you're given both mu sub k and mu sub s. Very good. Questions on that part? All right, so free body diagram. Oh, if you can't see because the camera just moved around a little bit. I'm not in the camera, it doesn't matter. This is. We're good. Okay? I'll pop in now the video. Okay? Uh, this is, I promise. All right, so free body diagram. Normal force, perpendicular to the surface. Force of the weight. And then which way is this block going to try to slide? To the Down the incline. So friction will go up the incline. We don't know what kind yet, so I'm going to put a question mark. You don't have to do that. Okay? You can put the... Uh, you can put static if you want to guess static. You can put kinetic. I won't take off if you guess wrong. Just because I'm teaching it, I want to emphasize I don't know yet. Picture free body diagram. And now that we have the free body diagram, we can tell we want to do what to our xy axis? Rotate it. So we're going to rotate our xy axis. How many people remember to rotate their xy axis? By either this or up into the right positive, however you prefer to do it. Okay. Usually this covers everything. It's quicker, but you can do both if you like. Okay. Now that we rotate our xy axis, we know we have to get components of the weight. Just some real quick scratch work as a reminder. Here's the xy axis, here's the weight. Now that we've rotated the xy axis, so we have an x part and a y part. Will those components be positive or negative? Negative. Negative, negative and negative, if you call up and write positive. How do you remember to add the negatives to their components? To add the negatives? All right. And let's figure out what the weight is. It was 50 kilogram crate times 9.8 meter per second squared, so 490 newtons. And technically, it doesn't have a sign because it has an angle. If you put the sign on it, it's not the end of the world. Force the weight in the x, force the weight in the y. Everybody's doing these the same way. You take the entire weight for the x component, multiply it by the sign of whatever the angle was in your problem, so 60 degrees. And for the y component, you use Cosine 60 degrees. As always, I would recommend that you put units on everything as you're working through the problems. What was 490 sine 60? Negative, yeah. negative 424.4 newtons. All right. And what was the uh, force of weight in the y? Negative 245 newtons. Okay. You guys are very excited about this. Yeah. <laughs> you want your voices on camera, and I won't call your names, I'll just point. It's Chris. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so weight in the x, weight in the y. And it makes sense that the x component's bigger because we've tilted the x, y axis past 45. So most of the weight is in the x direction. That makes sense because we've got a really steep hill and we're rotating our x axis to be along that really steep hill. Okay? Now we have to do a comparison. Well, if we're going to get this object to move, we're going to have to compare weight in the x to what? Because weight in the x is what's trying to get it to go down, what's trying to keep it from moving down the incline. Force of friction, more specific. Static, static max. maximum. Okay, so we're going to do a comparison between force of friction, static max, and the weight in the x direction. The absolute value is because I'm just talking about the size of those two forces. And we have weight in the x, but do we have static max yet? Nope. 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 So force of friction, static max, equals mu sub s times the normal force. We know mu sub s, it was given in the original problem, point two. To get the normal force, I'll just put that over here. We're going to sum our forces in the y direction. And like almost all of the problems we've done up until now, okay, the acceleration of the y is what? Zero. Zero. That's because if this crate's going to move, it's going to move up and down the incline like this. It's not going to move in our rotated y direction. So we can put zero. How many forces are there in the y direction? There's two. The normal force and the y component of the weight. Normal force, plugging in the y component of the weight, which is negative 245. Whoops, negative 245. Get a normal force of 245. How many made it this far? Normal force of 245? That's about everybody. Plug in back here. Mu sub s is 0.2 times 245 newtons, and I think I can do that in my head. Uh, 490, so 49. Is that right? Yep. Okay. 49 newtons. And this is where you have to add the sign. But which way is friction going? 
up so I can leave it alone. I don't have to add a negative, okay, because it's already going up, okay? This magnitude's only coming out of here. Always check your free body diagram, uh, but 49 newtons works. And now we can do our comparison. Force of friction static max is 49 newtons. Weight in the X is negative 424 newtons. Which one of those numbers is larger? Weight in the X. You don't have to write these numbers here if you don't want to. So therefore, it moves. Because we had a bigger force than static max. We overcame static friction max. And, yep, go ahead. Do you have to write that it moves? Yes. This is worth the point. Say that it moves. You don't have to put the numbers here if they're elsewhere on your paper. Now that we established that it moves, some people got to the point where they found out that it moved. Most of you, okay. All right, section this off a little bit. Now we actually can figure out what the acceleration is. If we got the inequality the other way, you would stop. You would say it doesn't move, the acceleration is what then? Zero. Zero. So if static max was bigger than whatever we were pulling down the hill with, it's not going anywhere, it would be it doesn't move an acceleration of zero. But it is moving. So let's sum our forces in the x direction. And now we know we have what kind of friction if it's gonna, if it's gonna be moving. Kinetic friction. It is going to move down the hill. So we'll have force of friction kinetic plus the weight in the x equals max. We've got two forces in the x direction, the x part of the weight and friction. We know weight in the x. Do we have friction kinetic yet? No is the answer. We have static, right? Have we calculated kinetic yet? Nope. So we will plug and chug into our equation right there. Mu sub k was given in the problem is 0.1. Our normal force doesn't care whether or not we're moving or not because that's in the y. So we already know what normal force is. It's 245 newtons and we get 24.5 newtons. Some people got force of friction kinetic to be 24.5. Just a little check. Friction kinetic should always be less than static max. Is it less than static maximum? Yes. Okay. Check for our sign. Friction's going up, so I can leave that alone. Plug in here, 24.5 newtons. Weight in the x is negative 424. Found that out earlier. Equals the mass, which was 50 kilograms, times the acceleration in the x. And since this is probably one of your good sample problems, I'm going to double check. Make sure we get this right. 24.5. Somebody else get, it's negative like 7.999. Somebody else get negative eight? I think that's what we got first block. So negative eight meters per second squared. Now you might be saying, oh, that's a pretty, pretty large value for acceleration. Well, we're on a 60 degree hill. This is a pretty darn steep hill. Yeah, it's like, you know, here's 45. We're like way up like this, okay? So it is approaching 90, so it makes sense that it's getting close to 9.8. If I had a 10 degree hill and I got negative eight, do you think there'd be a problem? Yes, unless there's somebody standing here on the picture pushing down the incline, we're in trouble because we're really close to free fall and we got a really shallow hill. Let me stop the video and then I'll take questions.